Hey all, this is Derek, and this is section 1.4, Algebra and Composition with Functions. And so we're going to look at a couple of different versions of this with graphs and um, with uh, equations coming up. And the idea is we can use function notation to kind of shortcut directions. So this down here, f plus g, um, evaluated at 2 is, is what this would be. This is the same thing as f of 2 plus g of 2. So those two notations mean the exact same thing. This over here means f evaluated at negative 4 um, times g evaluated at negative 4. Probably don't need that second set of parentheses there. Maybe a dot would have been cleaner. Um, but hopefully you can see what I mean. So it's basically we're just going to figure out what the two values are and then add them together, or multiply them, or divide or subtract. So um, this time we're doing it from a graph. So we're going to look for f of 2, which looks like it is 3, plus g of 2. And this one's g. And so g of 2 is negative 2. And so it looks like that one would be 1. Um, f minus g evaluated at 0. So f at 0 was 3 again. g at 0 is uh, minus 2 again. Uh, but this time we have minus and negative, so that's going to make that a plus, and so that will equal 5. Um, over here we had f evaluated at negative 4, which is 0, so that pretty much means this is going to come out to 0 because of the multiply. But just to finish that up, oh, g is also 0, so that one makes that 0. And then f evaluated at 1 is 3, and g evaluated at 1 is negative 2. So then this is going to be the same idea, except now we have equations instead of graphs. Um, so what we can do, we could do this like a, format it a bunch of different ways. We could just go and calculate f of 2 or negative 2 and then calculate g of negative 2 and then add those numbers together. Um, I could write all this out with the negative 2 plugged into all this plus all that. That would work also. Um, and then I can also do where I do the algebra first, and I actually add these. So if I, let me write this out just to make it bigger. <coughs> so if I have that, I could plug the negative 2 in right now, and I would get an answer. Um, or I can collect my terms first and plug negative 2 in, and I will get the exact same answer. So I'm going to do that, because when we're adding, subtracting, to me that always feels easier to do the algebra and kind of get it to smaller and then do the evaluate. So this will be plus 6x minus 2 up 3 is plus 1. So that's f plus g. And now if I evaluate that at negative 2, so I'm just going to do an equals from here, because I don't have, I didn't leave myself very good room. So there we are just putting <coughs> negative 2 in for everything, so this will be 4 minus 12 plus 1, or 5 minus 12, so that should be negative 7. Um, I will do the same thing over here, this time it's a subtract. And again, I could, um, I could plug in the value 4 right now, um, or I could collect terms, either way. Um, when we get down to the multiply and divide, to me it's much easier to just plug it in directly. For add, subtract, I tend to like to collect first, but it's, it's fairly arbitrary. Whichever one seems the easiest way to go. So x squared 5 minus x, uh, 5x minus x will leave us 4x, minus 2 minus 3 should be minus 5. And then we're evaluating this at 4. So 4 squared plus 4 times 4 minus 5. So that is 16 minus 5, so that should be 27. Um, F times G evaluated at 0. So here you can just see if I put in 0, the x squared 5x drops out, so all that's going to be left is 2. And here if I put in 0, 0 plus 3 is going to be 3. So there's definitely no reason to do a big giant foil and then put in the 0. It's much easier just to plug it in directly this time. And I get negative 6. And then here, negative 3 plugged in will get us negative 3 squared plus 5 times negative 3 minus 2. And then over ah, negative 3 plus 3. Okay, so this is going to make some number that I don't really care about. 
because this makes zero, so that is a does not exist or undefined because of the division by zero. And then this is doing the exact same thing, but with algebra. So f plus g would be x squared plus five plus x minus six. And then we're just simplifying from there. So x squared plus x, and then five minus six would be minus one. Uh, f minus g, so here we'd have x squared plus five minus, and then really important to get the parentheses um, around the second term anytime we're subtracting, and that's so that negative gets distributed through. So x squared uh, plus five minus x minus a negative six, and that's the sign that ends up going wrong, is right there. And so then this will be x squared uh, minus x, and it looks like plus 11. Um, f times g, so that's just gonna be a foil. <coughs> So x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times negative six, negative six x squared, five times x, five x, and five times negative six, so negative 30. And then just double check, there's no like terms, so that's, that's as good as that's gonna get. And then D's great, the worst thing about it is typing it. Uh, x squared plus five, that's f over g, x minus six, um, I can't factor, which means I can't cancel. Uh, what I mean by that is, think about if I have something like 10 over two, I can write that as 10 times five over two, and because I can factor that, I'm able to cancel. Here, nothing factors out of these or here, which means I don't have like terms and I can't reduce. Hey all, this is Derek, and this is section 2.4, and it's gonna be an introduction to the difference quotient. Um, this idea actually ends up being all first quarter calculus. If you throw a limit in front of that, that becomes the definition of a derivative. Um, so this, this will show up again and again. Today we're just gonna look at it in like the case of a line, which is about the least interesting version there is. Um, and we're gonna see it's just gonna be slope again, much like average rate of change, and much like 2.1 where we did slope. Um, but it's going to grow into other things as, as math goes on. So take today as a, a meet and greet, and uh, it's also really good practice with function notation. So if you remember from the last section, average rate of change was this f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And, and I had a drawing kind of similar to this that I did. And this would have been our f of b, and this would have been our f of a. And this, so we're finding our change in y. This was our b, this was our a, we we're finding our change in x. So the difference quotient is the same thing again. So here we're putting at this point, we're putting in x and we're getting out f of x. And then this distance h, let me write it a little bit bigger. So we're going from wherever this is, some distance h over to here, which makes x plus h. And then when we put that in, what we get out is f of x plus h. So if I go f of well, basically y2 minus y1, it's f of x plus h minus f of x, which is right there. And then over x2 minus x1, change in x, x plus h minus x, the x is cancel, and there you have the, the over h. So this, this, and then that slope formula back in 2, 1, they are all finding the slope of this line that we're looking at. It's just we're looking at several different notations and then the things that you end up doing with it ends up being different for sure, um, but they are they are all, all kind of looking at the same thing, which is slope. Okay, so this first example, um, they are using a instead of x. It's actually leading to the exact same place. Um, in my notes, I have it f of x plus h. They're just going to do an a plus h, same thing. Um, so f of a, what they're what they're doing with this is showing that we can do a variable change. And so if my function is right here, f of x equals 3x plus 7, finding f of a literally just means changing that x to an a and saying it's just going to be some value a instead of the general x. Um, if I want to find f of a plus h, all of this right here is going in for that x. Because remember, the same way if we, we found f of 7, we go 3 times 7, the 7 goes in for the x. Here, a plus h goes in. So this would equal three, and then need the parenthesis, a plus h. 
and then plus 7. And then we could distribute that 3, and then that's going to come out 3a plus 3h plus 7. So that would be that one. And then part C of this is putting these two things together and putting it over h. So what they're having you do is evaluate the two pieces of the difference quotient and then put it all together in the problem. Um, in the next one, it'll just be do the difference quotient, do this. Um, so here, we're going to go f of a plus h. That was this ex expression. So 3a plus 3h plus 7 minus f of a. That's this. 3a plus 7. Uh, those parentheses are totally important. Otherwise, that, the 7s end up not canceling, and that ends up being a bummer. And then all this is over h. So then if I distribute that sign, so minus 3a and then minus 7. Something that should happen when you do the difference quotient is that the stuff in the parentheses here, the f of a or f of x in my notes, it should cancel. So I, I got a plus 7, I got a minus 7, I got a minus 3a, I got a plus 3a. So then what's left is 3h over h. H is canceled, that should also happen. And we end up that the difference quotient is three, which remember back here, we are saying the difference quotient is the slope, and the slope of that line is three, so I really should come up with three on this, you know, I should always get the slope, um, assuming we're doing something linear. And this is the only chapter we do something linear. After this, it's curves, and it's much more meaningful. Um, one more example with just kind of straight away setting up the, uh, the difference quotient. Okay, so for this one, we're asked to, uh, given this function, evaluate and simplify the difference quotient. So um, here's our difference quotient. So we're going to go, we want to find f of x plus h first. So that's going to be negative 5x plus h minus 1. So that is f of uh, x plus h. And then next, we subtract f of x, which is just the original function. So minus, and that all important parenthesis negative 5x minus 1, and we'll close that, and then that's all over h, and I'll just abbreviate this difference quotient. So then next we'll distribute some stuff, so let's go negative 5x, negative 5h minus 1, minus and minus, that's going to be a plus 5x, minus and minus again, it's going to be a plus 1, all over h. So then again, if I did this right, all this stuff should cancel. If not, my signs are probably wonky. So plus and minus is good. Plus 1, minus 1 is good. And then if we look at what's left, it's minus 5h over h. h over h is 1 for all values other than 0. And that was a thing in the difference quotient. h can't be 0 until it's a limit. And that gets us negative 5. And what should it be? It should be negative 5, right? Because our slope was negative 5. So we just kind of took the longest road ever to say, yeah, slope's negative 5. Hi, Ellie. Okay, let's see if Ellie's going to let me like make this video. Uh, so this is Derek and Ellie, and this is section 5.5, Applications of Quadratic Functions and the Difference Quotient. So this is the difference quotient that we saw back in, I think it was chapter 1, or maybe chapter 2 with linear equations. Um, it's back again with quadratics. And so to evaluate the difference quotient, remember this was our formula that's going to eventually lead to pretty much first quarter calculus, but right now we're using it more as a um, exercise in function notation. So this is telling us to evaluate the function at x plus uh, h. So coming over here, that would be 5, and then x plus h is going in for that x. So it would be squared plus 3, x plus h minus 6. And then we're going to take away f of x, which is our original function. So 5x squared plus 3x minus 6. And then that's all over h. And again, this difference quotient, remember, this kind of went with our average rate of change, where we were finding this was x. We had some distance in here, h, so this was x plus h. And what we're doing is finding that slope again. Um, and when we get to calculus, what we do is we let h go to 0. And instead of a secant line, this becomes a tangent line on the curve. Uh, so you'll see this a lot in uh, 151. Um, so once I'm here, let's go ahead and expand this out. 
Remember this x plus h squared is really x plus h, x plus h, so you're gonna do a FOIL there, and that's gonna come out five, and then x squared plus two xh, when you do the inside and the outside, plus the h squared, here we're gonna have plus three x plus three h minus six, distribute that sign through, minus five x squared, minus three x plus six, all of that is over H. I think my pen might be dying. Let's go over to this one. Um, and then we'll distribute the five through, and then I'm just gonna rewrite all this stuff, and so I'll cut away and come back. Okay, so here this is with the five, just ran through, and then everything else I just brought down. Um, if everything goes right, remember everything in this F of X here should cancel with something earlier. So plus six minus six worked, plus three X minus, oh, 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 I got a sign error. Where is it? Oh, that's a minus, so it didn't cancel. So you could totally catch your sign errors that way. So minus three X plus three X, and then minus five X squared plus five X squared. And then let me rewrite what's left for clarity because people often lose that term right there. That's all over H. And then the second thing that should ha happen is this H should cancel in everywhere. If it didn't, then something's kind of gone wrong in your math. And that's how I knew I had a bad sign right here too. So this should end up 10X plus 5H plus three. And then if you just let that H go to zero, right there it becomes calc one. And so again, you're gonna see this bunch coming up.